You know, there are a couple of places I like to go to uh, during the daytime of uh, the restaurants I reviewed, and one is the Musee, uh, the Del Museo restaurant, which is the restaurant at the Cosmo Museum, and there's the Love Cafe at the other end. So they're all one is about three blocks from. Uh, the apartment of Blanquita, and the other is three blocks from it too, but in the opposite direction, you know. So, um, I went down to the Museum of Cozumel, which houses the Del Museo restaurant on a kind of stormy day, and I figured, well, I can't go swimming, so let me take a look at the museum, uh, which I went in, and this is a reproduction of a Mayan uh, home, uh, not circa. 1600 or 1500, but relatively modern day. These statues are modern. They're they're just modern sculptures. Um, uh, so it's a kind of interesting reproduction, but it's it's not what you'd like to see. But there's very little evidence of you know, what was here because anything that was here in the Mayan civilization was eventually torn down. Uh, this is a nice map of. Cozumel, so you can see the north side that faces the Gulf that you're looking at now, and then as you come around, you'll eventually, or, or we've passed, which you can't see it now, would be the town of San Miguel where all the people live. Uh, and then it, it's a nice museum. It doesn't compare at all to the one at Merida, or of course it doesn't compare at all to the one in Mexico City, which have the, those wonderful uh, surviving sculptures from uh, the Aztec and the Mayan civilization respectively but they do have a nice reproduction of the uh, coral which you know people who come here to snorkel if they're relatively young or haven't done it at all think uh, that the bottom was always like that uh, but the bottom is a disaster now all the coral is dead and you won't see any of these except if they're just mere skeletons you know I remember diving 30 40 years ago I had an aqualung in uh, 56 I was I was an early diver after watching Jacques Cousteau toy around the Pacific, and I read his book, of course, at the time, this was before he really got <laughs> wealthy, uh, basically by doing the kind of science he did, which was mostly take pictures, really. Um, but he had a way of living and 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 exploring and you know, doing the things that he did, and, uh, and opening the ocean to millions, including myself. That was quite spectacular. These are some surviving sculptures from the uh, the temple here, which is a temple to the goddess of uh, healing and childbirth. Not much is left. You can see the effect of weathering and the effect that uh, this was really a fishing village for many years and nobody cared about the Mayan civilization, or if they did, they were digging on the mainland, you know? Uh, and this was just considered to be, well, let's forget about it. But you, this, uh, there are some surviving details of the actual um, uh, the temple to the goddess of healing, the Mayan goddess of healing at childbirth. Uh, the, uh, it was a big thing for the Mayan women. They had to come out here at least once in their lifetime. It's a 10 mile journey by boat. The bay can get kind of rocky. It, it takes some doing. Here are some surviving pieces of the temple and uh, some more uh, the pottery that has survived. Uh, this may be of a later date. I'm really not too sure. It's really hard for things to survive here where you're just battered by hurricanes and, uh, and things like that. So here's a map of the Spanish trade routes uh, in and out. And here's a little picture of the Spanish soldier who left Cortez and started a family here, the first Spaniard here basically. So he's always memorialized everywhere. Looks pretty good there. This is the church I think is downtown off the plaza. This is a picture probably going back to the 20s or so. Uh, but again, this is a pretty rudimentary island, you know, uh, after the Mayan civilization fell. And it fell before the Spaniards came. It just, they just disappeared back into the jungle. They weren't a really militaristic civilization. And I guess uh, for, in fact, whatever reason, it failed. And the people just went back into the jungles the Indians, the Mayan Indians, uh, uh, so there's nobody to fight when the Spaniards came, you know, so they didn't know what to do. They, they wanted to plunder and get gold and everything, and nobody was around, you know. It was just like a big empty house. 
one of the uh, uh, nice things to do, and here this is the same stormy day, but I went up to the WZU Cafe. It's a great place to hang out. It's really never busy, to tell you the truth. <clears throat> and his Miguel and the owner's son giving me the thumbs up. He's always irrepressible, and now he's delivering the um, fruit plate, which is great, you know, for 50 pesos. That and a Coke, you sit there and take a look at what's happening in the world, you know. This was a couple of days later when it calmed down. I was with Dennis Alessandro, who's a musician and a photographer. He's been here for 20 years. You know, he's been coming here for 20 years. He's uh, from Minneapolis, amongst other places. And uh, we were talking about something, or other, probably about some of the music in town, which is very good. On my Cozumel site, you'll see there's some videos of some excellent jazz bands and rock bands, too, that are in town. Primarily at Wet Wendy's and at um, Love Cafe, you know, which is again, uh, they're about you know, three blocks from 10th Street, which is where the apartment of Blanquitas is. Um, this is the Love Cafe during the day. You know, people know it at night. It's a pretty, uh, it kind of jumps. It's some very good music. It's open air, which I like very much, you know, because I don't smoke and, and I don't drink either. So I usually have a Coke here and you can sit in the afternoon here for hours, you know. The, they're very friendly, the waiters and the bartenders here, uh, and uh, you can see it's just completely empty. And uh, a Coke is uh, 25 pesos, and a beer is the same, you know. So, nice place to sit. And you'll see myself, and again, with Dennis Alessandro, who uh, we like to swim during earlier, and uh, we're kind of sitting, not facing each other, but we just communicate uh, telepathically, so there's no need to face each other. And uh, then there's a little, one more view of the Palapa roof, which I uh, am using as a bridge to show you again how empty the Love Cafe is. You should drop in. It's a great place to spend the day if you swim in the bay here like we do. You can swim right by this place and uh, you can have a great time.